Hey guys, today I'm doing this everyday wearable natural wake up look. So this is clearly a bit of a vampy autumnal slash fall makeup look depending on what side of the planet you are on. I'm kind of getting in the autumn spirit because I'm going to New York in exactly seven days. Although when this video goes up, I'll probably already be in New York. And I have decided I've been thinking about this for a long time, kind of humming and hawing and I'm finally, I'm doing it. I'm starting a vlog channel. So I'm gonna be vlogging every single day that I am New York. I'm gonna be going around doing all the touristy activities and Paul is actually gonna be working so I'm gonna be by myself a lot of the time. So you guys are gonna be keeping me company and I'm gonna be asking you guys on recommendations on where to go, what to do, what to see, where to eat, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you're following on social media so you can recommend stuff for me to do and go subscribe to my vlog channel. I'll have it linked down below if you wanna follow me around while I'm having a great time in New York. It's really terrifying actually starting a second channel. Like I really don't know if anybody is gonna watch it or anybody is gonna subscribe to it, but yeah, hopefully you'll find it interesting. I just wanted a place where I could put stuff other than makeup because there's lots of other things that I want to talk about and share, but I don't know, I feel bad about sharing that kind of stuff on this channel because most of you subscribed for makeup tutorials, not for anything else. So if you are interested in other aspects of my life, go subscribe to that channel. Anyway, Let's get back to this. So if you wanna see how I created this really vampy autumnal fall look, then just keep watching. I'm gonna go straight into foundation and today I'm using the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. I've been kind of using this on and off for a little while and I really do like it. I'm not sure if I would repurchase it to be honest because it is super duper pricey. It is a beautiful foundation, don't get me wrong, but I just don't know if, if it's that good. You know, I think it's about 70 or 80 dollars and um i have tried other foundations like mac foundations for example are around 45 dollars here and i don't know I'm, I'm not sure it's like 30 dollars better also the shade is a tad too yellow for me so i just have to bring it down into my neck a little bit for concealer today i'm going to use for a change not going to use my nars i'm going to use the it cosmetics bye bye under eye this is in neutral medium and i know this is for under eyes but i just want to see what it's like elsewhere on the face. So I'm just gonna buff that really lightly. I just have a MAC 217 brush. Just a really, really tiny amount of that. The coverage is amazing in this concealer. I'm just gonna buff it over those areas. I have kind of a little bit of pigmentation from, uh, like kind of pigmentation scarring from some breakouts I had on my chin. It seems to have covered that quite nicely. And before I put that on my under eye area, I'm just gonna pop on some eye primer. I should have done this earlier. This is the BAMS eye primer. I'm actually beginning to run out of this, my God. I really, really like this primer, actually. I prefer it to the Urban Decay, what's it called, primer potion, because I don't think it's as sticky. And then my Bye Bye Under Eye Concealer. It took me so long to experiment with this technique of baking your under eye area, but I've been trying it out for the last week and it totally works. So I'm gonna take some of my Laura Mercier translucent finishing powder and I have a little powder puff. This is an It Cosmetics puff. It came with one of their powders and I've been using this and it works really well just to pack the powder on that under eye area, but it, it definitely definitely works to stop that concealer from creasing. And um, while that's cooking, I'm gonna fill in my brows and today I'm using my Eye of Horus brow pencil. I'm using the Light Ash Blonde color, which is called Husk today. Just a little bit lighter than usual. I really need to tint my eyebrows. Um, I've been putting it off because I wanted to wait until right up before I go to New York so then it lasts really well through those, those two weeks. And then I'm gonna take some Espresso Eyeshadow by MAC on an angle brush and just run that through to add a bit more texture. And then set them with some Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. I'm just gonna sweep that powder under my eyes away and then just take a little bit more just to set the rest of my face. Today for color on my face, I'm gonna use this Napoleon Purtis Contour Kit and I'm gonna go into the contour color first. Take off the excess, always very important. And just use that. Use this kind of as bronzer and contour. It's I think it can be used for both. It's quite a cool brown color, but on my cool coloring, it definitely works as a bronzer. I'm just gonna take that around the hairline. And next I'm gonna go into the highlight shade on the same brush. Just pop that on the top of the cheekbones. That is so pretty. I've had this product for ages. I haven't used it in so long. I forgot how good it actually is. It's really convenient. 
And then I'm gonna go into the blush color and just pop that on the apples of the cheeks. I'm not gonna to go too heavy with the blush just yet because as I said, the eyes and the lips are gonna be quite intense. So I can always add more later if I need to. So onto the eyes, first I'm gonna take, what? Let's try that again. First I'm gonna take this Makeup Forever Aquamatic, it's like a eyeshadow crayon thing. This is in the color ME80, catchy name. And I am going to just draw that on the eyelid. It's kind of a pinky cranberry shade, very autumnal. I'm gonna draw it all over the eyelid right up into the crease like that and then take a fluffy blending brush and blend at the edge and i'm also going to take that crayon onto the lower lash line and just take it about halfway across and then blend it in and i'm going to go back into omega eyeshadow which i use through my brows and on the same blending brush i'm just gonna just take that kind of just above the socket so this is gonna be, this is gonna be a transition shade, not really a contour shade, cause I'm gonna put a different color right into the crease. So this is gonna be the color that kind of helps to blend the darker shade up towards the eyebrow. Now for the really exciting bit. <laughs> Today I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury uh, palette. This is Vintage Vamp. Now, unfortunately my glittery eyeshadow has exploded. So I can't like hold it up properly or else it's gonna go everywhere. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is take the darkest color in the bottom right hand corner and I've switched to a pointier tapered eyeshadow brush. This is a petite crease by Zoeva. And I'm just gonna raise my eyebrows slightly so I can kind of get into my crease a bit better and tilt my head back. And just pop the color right into the crease. Wow, that is a soft, soft eyeshadow basically putting it in a line out here and extending the line out past where my crease ends to extend the look of the eye. And then I'm gonna switch back to the other fluff, fluffy eyeshadow brush and just blend the edge. And then tilt my head back a little bit more and just blend that color across a little bit further towards the bridge of my nose. Back to the fluffy brush, blend the edge. Sticking with that same, ooh, I've lost a little bit of the eyeshadow. <laughs> Sticking with the same dark color, I'm gonna go in with a pencil, uh, angle brush this time and just bring that along the outer edge of the lower lash line and just extend that line out to meet the end of the eyeshadow coming from the crease here. Take the tapered brush and blend. It looks quite cool with that gap actually, like a double liner kind of effect, but I wanna fill it in. I just want it to look like one continuous shape. So I'm just taking a smaller eyeshadow brush and just stamping that dark color right in that little gap. And just take the blending brush again. Next, I'm gonna go into the very lightest color here kind of pearly pink highlight shade. And on a pencil brush, I'm gonna bring that around the inside corner. I'm bringing that right the way across to meet the darker color on that lower lash line. And then on the inside, just tilt my head back and kind of flick the color in a little bit. And then I'm gonna go into this color here. And I'm just gonna buff that on the edge of where those two colors meet. Now, of course, I can't not use this color, this kind of amber gold glitter. So I'm taking a flat brush and then I'm just gonna pat it on top. And it's kind of sparse, so you still see the color underneath it coming through. It just adds like a gold reflex on top of it. I'm just gonna take a little bit on the very tip of that brush as well and just push it at the transition between the light and the dark color, right at the center of my lower lash line. Tight line my top waterline with my Eye of Horus pencil. This is the only pencil that I can tight line, actually it's the only product full stop that I can tight line with that does not transfer onto my lower lash line. And I don't want my lower lash line to have black. Instead of black on the lower lash line, I wanna do a deep emerald green. I think it will be really, really interesting against these more plummy colors. So this is an Australis pencil. This is one of their Jellify gel liners in Sour Apple Soda. 
And then I'm gonna take a different black eye pencil. Sorry, I know I'm using a million products in this look. Um, this is one of the Rimmel Scandalized black pencils. I love this for lining along my lashes because it's kind of, you have a little bit of play time before it sets so you can manipulate it with a brush, but it does not last on my waterline. So that's why I use the Eye of Horace one there. Um, so I'm just gonna drag this along the roots of the lashes. Make sure I get it right in to the lash bed so there's no um, strips of skin showing through. And then before it sets, take the angle brush that I was using earlier and just drag it out. So I'm kind of smudging it and softening it in, but also pulling it out and up into a bit of a flick. I'm gonna pop on some mascara. This is the Urban Decay Perversion Mascara. For lashes, I'm gonna use Ardell Dummy Wispies and I'm gonna cut about a third off of the outside. And I'm just placing them on the outside half of my eye just to help again with that elongated kind of feline shape. So onto the lips, I've got two lip options for you today. First one is a little bit more wearable. I'm gonna start with Max Sore Lip Pencil. And next I'm gonna put on Max Twig Lipstick. And that's lip one. I think this is a very wearable lip. You could definitely wear this for daytime. Maybe not with quite such a crazy eye look though. Lip two, I'm also gonna start with Sore Lip Pencil by MAC. But this time I'm gonna go over the top with one of the L'Oreal Color Reach Mattes in number 430. Oh my God. I am so paranoid I'm gonna have lipstick on my teeth at the end of this, so forgive me if I do. But that's the finished look. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Possibly not the most wearable look, but it's so autumnal, I actually, love this look and absolutely you don't have to wear both together you could just do the crazy eyes with a nude lip or you could do the dark lip with a more natural eye or just do both of them go for it i give you my permission to wear this much makeup thank you so much for watching i hope you're having an amazing day and we'll see you very soon bye